This guy right here is a beat maker who's trying to figure out how to use an EQ correctly. He doesn't really understand the purpose of it and he has absolutely no clue what he's doing. If this is you, follow along carefully because with these tricks you will level up tremendously as a beat maker. Level 1. What is an EQ and how do we use it? It's basically a tool where you can boost or cut specific frequencies. On the left you can hear and see the lows and on the right the high frequencies. These little circles are called bands and you can drag them up or down. By dragging them up you're making this frequency louder. By dragging it down you're cutting it out. But why is this so important? Let me explain. It's kind of like building a house. You're stacking all kinds of stuff on top of each other to build a house just like when you're making a beat. All the components of the house are perfectly shaped so that the house looks beautiful and doesn't collapse. Then the equalizer is used to shape the sounds or components of the beat so that they fit beautifully together to achieve a clear and balanced mix. Okay it's important to remember that we're using an EQ to fix sounds but we can also use it to shape sounds and that is called creative mixing but we'll get to that in level 3. Level 2 here's an example of fixing a melody. This is played on a dark piano which sounds awesome but as soon as we turn up the bass it becomes muddy and it doesn't sound professional anymore. That is because the bass is clashing with the lows of the piano. Low frequencies are very powerful and they have long sound waves, which makes it difficult to blend them together. To make the piano and the bass sound good together, we're gonna cut away the low frequencies of the piano. The empty space will be filled up by the bass. Now both sounds have an optimal presence in the mix. If you think the piano should be more present, you can try to cut away some of the high frequencies from the bass. That will make more space for the piano. And if that still isn't enough, try boosting the mid to highs of the piano slightly. That should be enough. If there's still something that sounds a bit off, it can be because of a resonating frequency. To find those, create a tight bell-shaped band and drag it all the way up. Try to find a resonating sound. Now this is where you need to listen for. Swipe through the spectrum and listen for the most annoying, ringing, almost distorted sound. Once you've found it, simply drag it down and make the band a little wider. Cool. Level 3. Creative mixing. This is the part where we don't fix problems anymore. Instead we're gonna shape sounds to our personal liking. Let's say you want this piano to sound like it's playing out of a smartphone or an old radio. These devices don't have a big frequency range so we're gonna narrow it down like this. Then take another band and search for the most prominent frequency. Now bring it back down until it sounds the way you like. Another example is the nightclub effect. If you're standing outside, only the strong frequencies are coming through the walls. The strong frequencies are the low frequencies, so we're gonna cut away all the highs so that only the lows remain. Cool, now you can also create automation clips in an EQ. Let's say we're making lo-fi and you want the high frequencies to come in every now and then. Maybe even a wobble effect. All you need to do is right click the band position up and select create automation clip. Then in the playlist create an automation curve like this and as you can see the EQ now moves by itself. These techniques will make your beats sound better but combined with these tricks your beats will absolutely sound so insane. Your beat, never mind, your beats will sound insane. Um, Subscribe, gotta go now.